Today on Fun King Garage, we're going to be spending the entire day inside because it is rainy outside and I don't want to be in it. But don't worry because all the work takes place in here anyway. Today I feel it's time that we get in under the dash and modify that go pedal to adapt the pedal for the new cruise control system using diesel conversion specialist kit 1591. Now the exciting part is, I didn't study the instructions beforehand, so we're going to dive in and see how big of a train wreck this can really be. All right, so at this point, I'd like to assume that we've all become friends. So let's be honest with each other for just a minute here. I would love to get you down in there so that you could see what I was doing. But if you've ever tried to film anything inside of an automobile, there is just no room. So you're just going to have to watch me from afar and, uh, and just believe that the pedal's still in there and I'm taking it out. I did contemplate taking out the driver's seat, but being that there's no power in the truck right now, I can't roll it forward to get to the back bolts. So I'm going to cram my body down into that very tight space and get that fuel pedal out of there. Well, I was hoping it was just those two 10 millimeter bolts, but no, of course not. It seems that there's one up higher too. So, not really sure how I'm going to get to it. I absolutely should have taken this seat out when there was still power in the truck. So there she is, three 10 millimeter bolts. And they are actually all in the same direction. There was just one up hiding behind the fuel pedal. Oh, thanks Ford for another great design. <laughs> No, it's just satin. Just satin on there enough that I could push the truck forward to get the Dodge out. Mm -hmm. So the way they put this connector on here, there's a big aluminum plate and then they put the connector on with the push button for the connector between the connector and the plate instead of putting it the other way where you could grab the connector and get it off. There's probably a special tool to get it off. Oh, those guys hit Ford. You should become my YouTube sidekick. It's a full-time job and it doesn't pay anything. Hey. <laughs> Am I selling it? <laughs> Sounds like uh, my last job. <laughs> oh, I should have taken this driver's seat out while there was still electric in the truck. <laughs> but I can't get to the back bolts now. Mm. At least I don't think I can. Kind of need to stick my head up underneath there. I think I might take a little filming intermission and try to pull that seat. And that's exactly what I did. I took a little break from filming and I removed the seat. It actually wasn't too bad even though I couldn't adjust it. 
But now with that seat out of there, I can get my head up under the dash and finally see what's going on. Well, I can get my head up under the dash. This is where it'll go back to time lapse and then... Because nobody wants to watch this. <laughs> I don't know, maybe people do want to watch this. <laughs> uh, I'd want to watch that. With the pedal out now and in my hand, it's time to move over to the bench and finally take a look at those instructions. All right, so this is the 1591 pedal assembly parts. I haven't really gone through the instructions yet, so we're gonna kind of wing this as we go. Step one, don't take your seat out and just remove three easy bolts to get the pedal assembly out. Figured that out on my own. Step two, mark holes and drill pedal with template. All right, so the instruction sheet comes with a template on the back of it that you get to uh, do a little crafts and cut it out. It looks hand drawn. Pay no attention to the bat phone. Now, your, your mileage may vary, but DCS did actually email me a PDF of these same instructions so I could have printed out another set to cut out <clears throat> but they were also smart enough to not put any important information on the back side of what you're going to be cutting out so and we're not going to cut the skin with these super super sharp scissors and they are too they're crazy sharp all right so there's our template now we get back to the instructions that say to mark the holes and drill the pedal. So I have a spring actuated center punch here. Uh, in the picture, the throttle pedal is sitting like this, which makes sense because that looks like this. And you can tape your template down to your pedal if you want to, but that looks about right according to the marks in the picture. So we're going to drill holes and then this, this beautifully machined spacer gets bolted onto here, I guess. Somehow, somewhere. Probably like that because that kind of kind of lines up. Just trying to see if it lines up with those holes. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that's that's fine. I think I'd actually like it to be right there. I think that's a much I think that's a much cleaner spot. It, it follows the contour here a little bit better. So we're going to make a few quick adjustments here. I'm going to get this block lined up where I think it should be. And then, so I'm going to use this handy dandy set of transfer punches. Find one that fits down through those holes, like that one right there. Let's try one bigger just to see. Oop. So for those wondering, that's a 3 16 transfer punch. Make sure you put it in the right way and don't hammer the wrong side. See, that pushed that hole way, way up compared to where it was. Oh, 
and yes now I have three sets of holes but it's okay I know which ones we're working with we're working with the ones that are the furthest up so I'm gonna go ahead I'm going to pre-drill that hole with an eighth inch and I'm going to use the ones that I that I transferred feels dirty drilling into my fuel pedal second. Save those for later. This is the uh, the nine. I think it's nine thirty seconds that they recommend. Yeah, six millimeter or nine thirty second. I didn't realize six millimeter was an option. I have one of those. I hunted everywhere for a nine thirty second and only had this cheapy one. Let me grab a six millimeter. Okay. Well, I thought I had a six. I have fives. So we're gonna use this uh, cheap crappy nine uh, thirty seconds. I do not have high hopes for this. I'm gonna get a block to put up underneath there. I should be drilling this in my in my drill press, but then I have to move. Oh, these are horrible drill bits. Well, I'm afraid all kinds of metal shavings are falling up into my into my pedal assembly. Got a little wood on that one. All right. Save all that for later, too. <sighs> Should probably clean up those edges just a bit because they're pretty pretty nasty I do not currently have a set of countersink bits so I just use a bigger drill bit just to take that burr off one of these days I'll get a set of nice nice set of countersinks if you got a recommendation for a good set drop it down in the so as I was saying before I was uh, rudely interrupted by a dead battery if you have a good recommendation for a set of countersinks, leave them in the comments down below. Or to the left or to the right or wherever YouTube put them this week. All right, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Let me clean up real quick and uh, we'll get rolling again. I know it's not clean, but I cleaned up a little bit and put some stuff away. That way I don't get out of, out of control. 
Alright, so now it's telling me to install the spacer block and the cable pulling arm temporarily. Well, so I'm going to have to figure out. I know that this is the spacer block, but which one is the cable pulling arm? Like that. Looks pretty good. And then it doesn't really say which, which bolts to use. So I'm going to go with these guys because it does show them on the other side. So if I run that in, and I'm not going tight, I'm just going just finger snug because it says temporarily. Just enough to, just enough to hold it. But that uh, worked out pretty good. I think I got that positioned pretty nicely. So, and then this guy. That guy lines up with those holes. Of course it does, because they made it to be like that. Yeah, see now this is all starting to make a little more sense to me, the way this is now. Alright, so again, just loose. Not, not super tight, but it'll allow me to... Uh, in fact, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to not be able to take those out manually. I'm going to take those out and put a flat washer under there. Seems to be lined up nice. Alright, so the next step, so I throw my throttle pedal around. The uh, next step is talking about taking your Ford um, cruise control solenoid that is out of a gas a gas powered Ford and uh, mounting it to the bracket which is this guy here something that I did notice was if you put that in there it, it won't bolt down tight there's kind of a gap in there so I'm thinking that I'm still going to use this big this big rubber squishy in there but because of the way that these are made this is going to end up sitting way up on top of that and I think that's too much so I'm wondering if I just if I just yep that looks like the winner so I'm actually going to cut I'm going to cut these interior nubbies off and just use it like a doormat. I wonder if my super sharp scissors do a better job. Yep. Bought these scissors a long time ago. They were in a box at a show. And they were marked sharp butt scissors. And they are. All right. I really want that more flush, though. Let me get a let me get a safety razor. Not the nicest to cut, but it's definitely a good sharp blade, being brand new. Now, if I gash myself, I'm going to leave it in the video. Well, that one shaved off nicely. How come all the rest of them didn't do that? All right, that's good enough. So now I'll be able to lay that back on there. Now this particular cruise control servo, this hole up here was not threaded. That's not the right bracket. I, uh, I did run a tap down into that hole. Alright, so I'm going to use my own hardware because I know that I have it. And then I'll be able to put a bolt in all three holes. And if it turns out that that's wrong later, that's, that's fine. Don't really want the, uh, the cruise control solenoid falling down at my feet while I'm driving. That, that could be bad. Now I'm questioning whether or not these bolts are long enough. They're pretty deep holes on there, but I guess they were technically only threaded in that far factory. And that's about how far they're getting threaded in now, so... That one doesn't feel like it's threaded in very nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's all right. Kind of felt like it was being problematic. Remember, you're not saving the world. And then I like to go back with something manual and just kind of feel they weren't really tight at all but you're also threading into aluminum so you'll tear them right out of there if you go too hard it's still a little still a little close to the servo right there I um I think I might take this back off and file that out just so it's not digging into the servo That should be good. Yes. Just a little grinding. Cleaned it up just, just enough. Now it's not touching. And I hope this is the right. Oh yeah, it is right end again if I didn't say this is out of an 08 Ford Escape so it's now telling me to um, looks like it's telling me to install it in the truck but I'm not gonna do that yet step nine uh, is to snap the cruise cable into the cruise cable bulkhead bracket and adjust if necessary um, so now it's actually putting it back together but the crazy part is is nowhere in these instructions does it cover any of these other brackets so i'm um, on my own so let me uh let me see if i can figure out how these go and then i can bring everybody else up to speed this bracket lines up with the holes from the factory bracket. The factory bracket bolts through here and there was three 10 millimeter nuts that went through those. So that obviously bolts on when you put it back on the bracket that's in the truck, which you don't have to remove, but I did. Then we got, okay, so up here we have, and looking at the, at the CAD drawing, which CAD drawings are always very helpful, uh, this this bracket definitely goes to the back this bracket sits like this coming to the front and this one goes down this one goes on top and that would be absolutely where these bolts come in so I'm glad I used my own bolts and then we're gonna put that one through and then there's all kinds of adjustment for this and then I have to assume, I know assuming is dangerous, uh, the throttle or the um, cruise control cable is going to come through here and lock into this bracket somehow, which is going to have to be trimmed up a little bit. And that will pull this. Nope, I think this one, I think this hole is for. I think this hole would be for your throttle cable and I think this one back here oh yeah I can I can I can sense it now my apologies for this thing wobbling around like this I'm gonna drop just a couple of m6 bolts down in these holes to hold it temporarily Got a couple in here that are pretty decent length, just to kind of keep it from, from hopping around so that those won't stay. We'll go back to using the factory ones in a few minutes. Cruise control solenoid coming in through here, which may still need to be trimmed up because this is a perfectly square hole in the bracket. It's got a little tab on it, but we'll take care of that in a second. 
and then this would clip on to here and then this would have to be adjusted for the cruise control so as you pull the pedal it pulls that would be about where it needs to be so then your cruise control when it pulls going to pull your throttle pedal so that's it that's where that goes so I'm going to bolt that onto this piece this piece will get bolted on to the bracket in the truck these bolts will not be here the three nuts will go back on um, which will clear this bracket by uh, just about nothing oh that's fully extendable too beautiful there's quite a bit of adjustability to all of this so that's good so I am gonna I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit. I'll just take my my little die grinder to it, so it'll fit in that square hole and not be a keyed hole. Uh, we know that it goes there. All of that adjustment's gonna take place once it's in the truck. But as a final assembly, that is what it looks like, and that is how it goes. And of course, if you have questions, please reach out to me. I don't mind answering some questions. So that's that. That's as easy as it gets. So let me finalize this installation, get it back in the truck, and, uh, and then I'll show you what I got. <laughs> oh, there's just not much room up underneath here for any of this. So I am going to be climbing back up under the dash. You ever ask yourself, am I too old to be doing this? I'm 49 years old, just for those who want to know. This just doesn't make any sense to me. And now, 30 minutes later. All right, so I had to loosen up the, uh, the pull arm, the one that hooks to the the pedal spacer I had to loosen that and get it out of the way temporarily so that I could reach all the bolts to get this thing set in there and that bracket is oh it is right there and I got a emergency brake pedal in my neck Now i got to figure out how to make it not touch that shift cable. And of course the nearest thing to zip tie it to is the steering shaft. No, no that's a bad idea. So let me finish getting this all bolted up and then I'll get you up underneath there and try to give you a closer view of what I'm looking at. Sorry, there was just no way to get you underneath there and be able to actually have you see what's going on. Imagine jamming your face down into a box of hoses and wires and trying to figure out what it is that's in front of you. And that's exactly what it looked like. But I did take an opportunity to reach out to diesel conversion specialists for some help. We had a discussion on why that arm was rubbing on things, and we came to the conclusion that I didn't need that full arm. I don't have a throttle pedal, being that that is drive-by-wire, so I was given the A-OK -okay to lop that thing off. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So you know what time it is? Fabrication time.
Knowing that I had to cut the top of this bracket off, I didn't want to just hack it off straight across and make it all sharp and pointy. So what I did was I measured the width of that arm and then found a socket that also matched that same size. And I used that socket as a template so that I had a nice half round top on it. One, it makes it a little more professional looking and two, it stops those sharp corners from grabbing anything under the under the dash. It just so happened that that nub for the cruise control fit up into the 3 8 drive side of the socket, centered it perfectly for me. Hot. Gotta stay hydrated. Honestly, I have no idea why I didn't film cutting that, but you know, it's like cutting any other metal. You can see the cut was a little bit rough, so I then took it to the grinder and rounded it out. So professional. little flap disc action on it just to make sure there was no rough edges or sharp edges and it was good to go now with the modifications complete it was time to Climb my butt back up underneath that dash and get that arm bolted back in place. This way I could check it all for clearance and make sure it was no longer rubbing on anything. And just like that, I was done. I wish I could work this fast in real life. This was a tough one because I couldn't show you what I was seeing. But here is a little shot of what it looks like now that it's up in there. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff under the dash and it's not easy to move around in there. Overall, I think it fits fine and it should work fine once the truck is up and running. But that's enough project talk for now, because this is the end of the episode. So much work has taken place, and yet there's still so much more to do. Though I do look forward to every minute of it, I'm also really looking forward to the finish line. I've also been working on a few other projects, and I hope to be bringing those to you very, very soon. But you know how it goes. At this point, it's time for me to grab that tool bag, hit the road, and move on to finding my next adventure. Thanks for watching.